Hi, Jack. Hi, Jack. Um, I just thought I'll uh, check with you, you know, what, what is the conference uh, theme this year? Well, we, we, we talk about the, you know, building safety uh, through uh, the sharing of best practices. Uh, but it's my belief that you know, this, the theme was very similar last year because the problems don't go away in one year. Right. So, and I still believe that you know, sharing best practice in training is, is fundamental. Uh, we can have competition between airlines, between training organizations, However, training in itself should not be a competitive element. Uh, it says training means safety, and that should not be a competitive element. And I think if you have information that could help improve safety by training, then it's kind of your moral obligation to share that with the rest of the world. So that's why we push this sharing best practices. Right. Uh, what do you think are the challenges uh, which are specific or unique to uh, Asia? Well, Asia, uh, is the fastest growing uh, area in the world in terms of aviation. Uh, so whilst Europe is kind of a stable one, I mean Asia is, 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 is you know, they had double digit growth factors, right. we have uh, new airlines popping up over where um, major airlines are still growing, uh, small airlines, low cost carriers are very successful. So it's really expanding and this, this is where the growth of the world. So that means more airplanes, it means more pilots, more cabin crew, so that means hiring issues, um, training issues, so that are really the, the concerns for Asia for the moment, and keeping the quality of all that personnel high during this expansion is very difficult. How, how do you think, uh, you know, what is the difference in what's happening in uh, Europe right now, and how would you compare the two? Well, Europe, first of all, the, the market is different. The, in Europe we have what I would call a mature market, so it's not growing anymore. Yes, there is a little bit of growth, uh, especially then in the low cost uh, carriers, but I mean it's, it's been there for so long, uh, the market is, is mature, people who want to fly, fly. So uh, Ryanair, for example, and the low cost like Ryanair and, and Wizz Air, they managed over the last 15 years to increase the market share uh, by creating a new market. By going low cost, you could open up the market to people who would not afford, could not afford to fly with the major ones. But for the rest, it's, it's becoming stable. Even Ryanair is now uh, actually considering that you know this expansion in that area has come to an end. So he's now refocusing his growth, attacking the other, the major carriers by going to Brussels National, going to the, the big airports. So I think we are very mature. So that means there is no growth. Or nearly no growth and it creates then less training uh, also another element is that the regulation uh, the IASA regulations are so uh, strong now and then very mature as well that uh, everybody in Europe is doing the same thing right. so best practices is already something which has been pushed by IASA and IASA as a regulator is has a very open position to the industry meaning they do have uh, committees where industry representatives from the airlines from work together with EASA, writing the rules. Uh, EASA is coming to our conference in Berlin next month to explain the new rules for next year, etc. So we have this relationship, we have this maturity, which makes the, I would say, the problems a little bit more um, manageable. Right. So that's the major difference. So, would you say that uh, there has to be some kind of coming together of minds uh, of the regulators in Asia? Because it's a little more disparate here. Well, right? that would be the, the, the perfect world. When you see the states, well, the states, you know, you have the FAA, right. well, they, they, they have 350 million Americans, which are fall under the FAA rule. We have Transport Canada taking care. The South Americans are different, but they follow FAA very closely. Right. Uh, in, in Europe, you have the EASA. And then all those which are not European Union, but were under JAR before, follow EASA. So I think it would be a great idea, although a, a number of countries in, in the Far East is, is getting to, they look at EASA as reference, right. but it would be a great idea if, if somehow we could put all these regulatory bodies together and try to come to something which is uniform, it would, uh, it would enhance safety and it would especially make life for the airlines, for the industry, much easier right. in terms of expansion. It would create a, a, a very different 
uh, industry. Is it possible? I don't know, but that, that would be the ideal world, yes. Right. So I think uh, one of the uh, growth requirements for the conference also would be to have more involvement and participation from the regulators of the region. Effectively, that would be really nice. Uh, we right. tried, and for the moment it's kind of difficult. They are very reluctant, which is, I would think, typically for the region. Right. Uh, we have a few that come this year to the... Uh, so that's... We're, we're opening up. Right. And, it's this problem.